God hates lies. When you lie to a person, you're also lying to God. Where you are lying to yourself and you are hurting your blessing, you are hurting your spirituality with Christ, you are hurting your family, you are hurting your future because you're a liar. Just so you know, in God's eyes, there's no such thing as a white lie. God looks at the heart. The truth now will set us free. In Acts chapter 5, a, a man named Ananias, together with his wife Sapphira, sold a piece of property. Now, let's just stop here. We, we need to go through the scriptures so you understand the whole thing. Nowhere did the New Testament church say you have to give 100% of what you sell. Now in Acts 4, a guy did that in Acts chapter 4, but nowhere does it say that you have to give 100% of what you sell, okay? So the, all they were doing is they were trying to copy somebody else, but they were also trying to cheat and lie. Now, why does Luke in verse 2 say with his wife's full knowledge, the reason is Luke is a doctor and he wants to be very specific. So he wants to make sure that God knew that it was not only the husband but the wife. Now let me just stop here and just say this to you. Wives, you will be accountable for your husband. And I'm sorry to tell you that. The Bible says we are one. And I know that it would be much easier teaching for me to say you will not be accountable for your husband. But the fact is this, how can you not be accountable for something that you have oneness in? Okay, if you have oneness, then you're accountable. So wives, you are gonna be accountable for your husband. But husbands, you're gonna be accountable for your wives. You need to understand this. It's not wives just are accountable for husbands and husbands get off scot-free. No, you, both of you are going to be accountable. You also are going to be accountable for your children. And you're going to be accountable for your grandchildren. And God does take into accountability of, of, of your relationships with people. You'll be accountable for friends around you too. So the point is, Luke wants to stress, this lady, the wife, she knew right well that they were lying. Let's go to verse, chapter, verse 3 of chapter 5. Ananias, how is it that Satan has so filled your heart that you have lied to the Holy Spirit and have kept from yourself the money you receive? Here, here's the key part of this, okay? How is it that Satan has so filled your heart that you've lied to the Holy Spirit? Now, somebody says to me, well, he lied to the Holy Spirit, but he didn't lie to people. No, you don't understand. In verse 4b, he says, you have lied just to human beings, but to God. In other words, he's lied to both. So watch this. Here, here's the theology, if you understand this. When you lie to a person, you're also lying to God. And, and, and Ananias and Sapphira, they never talked to the Holy Spirit. They talked to Peter. But when they were talking to Peter, they were talking to God. Now, somebody says to me, theologically, I don't understand this. If you're a born-again Christian, the Bible says in Corinthians that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. My body, my tongue, my brain, my heart, my whole thing is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So who owns Billy Richards? the Holy Spirit. Who gave the Holy Spirit Billy Richards? I did. Jesus is Lord of my life. He's in charge. So when me, Billy, lies, I'm not only lying to the person, but I'm lying to the Holy Spirit. Now here's the craziest thing. You not only lie to people, but you lie to God but the craziest thing is a lot of us, and probably a large percentage of us, we lie to ourselves. There are certain things we are doing, and later on in the sermon I'll talk about this, where you are lying to yourself and you are hurting your blessing, you are hurting your spirituality with Christ, you are hurting your family, you are hurting your future because you're a liar. And this whole philosophy is, well, it's, there's nothing wrong with telling a little white lie. 
Just so you know, in God's eyes, there's no such thing as a white lie. And deception is a lie. Okay? And it, for some of you, you cannot get this truth. When you cheat at work, or you cheat on your tax return, or you cheat or do any, that's a lie. You are, well, let me put it this way. Satan is filling your heart. Satan is filling your heart. I just want to end with this, the very last verse, verse 12. And the apostles performed many signs and wonders among the people. Why? Because in verse 11, if you read, great fear seized the whole church and all who heard about these events. Why do miracles happen when people fear God? Because people put their faith in God when they fear God. See, when people have door number two, three, or four to go through, then they don't fear God. But when you only have door number one, God, then you fear him. And a lot of people are so arrogant or lying to themselves that they think there is a door number two, or door number three, door number four. Just so you know, there's only one door, Jesus Christ, okay? And, and just you, you, fear God, it was unbelievable. So let's start with five H's. The first H I give to you is hate. God hates lies. God hates lies. John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No one comes to the Father in prayer, or when you die, no one comes to the Father except through me. No one. But notice what Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am life. The word I am comes back from the Old Testament. Moses, when he was taking children of Israel out of Egypt, children of Israel were in slavery. Moses says, who should I say sent me? When I go to the children of Israel, why would they listen to me? And Jehovah said, tell them the I am sent you. I am. Jesus takes these words, which no man should ever use, and Jesus says, I am. I am the truth. I am the life. I am the way. Why does God hate lies? Because his son is the truth. His son is the truth. Notice in Acts 5, where did the lies come from? When Satan filled the heart of Ananias and Sapphira. The opposite of truth, which is Jesus, is lies, which is Satan. And God hates lies. God hates you lying to him. God, you lying to people, and you lying to yourself. Now let me just take you a little further. In Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16, you have to pay attention to this because there's a, a bewildering in the first two sentences. There are six things the Lord hates, seven that are detestable to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that that devises wicked schemes, feet that are quick to rush into evil, a false witness who pours out lies, and a person who stirs up conflict in the community. Now, here's the irony of the scripture. Are you ready? There are six things the Lord hates and seven that are detestable. If you look at this list, there are seven things. Why does he say there are six things he hates? Because out of this list of seven, there are two things that are the same. In verse 17, lying tongue. And in verse 19, a false witness who pours out lies. See, those two things are the same. It boils down to the root or the foundation is lies. God hates. It's detestable when you lie. Now, let me just take you to number two, hurt. When you lie, you hurt God, you hurt others, you hurt yourself. Let me give you an illustration of this. 
when I lie, or, or I make it sound, I, I stretch the truth, or I fib, or I'm just not 100% accurate. When I lie, because I've given my life to Jesus, my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, I am hurting the Holy Spirit. But number two, I'm hurting others around me. Parents, listen to me. If you're a liar, your children will be liars. If you are deceptive, your children will be deceptive. If you cheat, your children will cheat. The fact is the curse will be carried on unless the children are set free from it. Many young people who come to Christ, one of the things we have to do is break the curse of lying, where for generations, their families have been living in lies, 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 lies. And we have to break. It's hurting the heart of God, it's hurting your family, your friends, but it's hurting yourself. Let me give you an illustration of this. How many of you in this room, you watch TV or you watch something on the computer or you read a book, and if Jesus was there physically, you would not watch it or read it? Yet you lie to yourself. Because Jesus is not there physically, but he's there spiritually, you give yourself license to watch or read. How many of us are doing something that's physically hurting us, but we've given us permission to do it because we're lying to ourselves? The body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. How many of us, we cheat on our income tax return, but it's not big, and Revenue Canada probably couldn't care less, and nobody will find it, so if I can't get caught, I will do it. Well, just so you know, God already caught you. God has already caught you. And if you need somebody to be judgment over you, you need to grow up. The fact is this, your heart is already filled with Satan. How many of us, we will rob our neighbor in order to make a dollar? I would rather be bankrupt and be a truthful man of God than be the richest man in this world and be a liar. Now here's the craziest thing. Somebody says to me, God hates this. Jesus is truth. We hurt. What's the third H? Well, third H is help. We need to get help. Peter says to Sapphira, he asked her a question, did you know that your husband cheated us and lied? He gave her an olive branch. She could have said yes. The Bible says in James 5 that if we confess our sins one another, God will not only forgive us, but he will heal us. Lying is a sickness. And some of us say, well, I can't help myself. It's a sickness. And I can't get medicine for it, therefore I'm allowed to lie. No, you're not. The blood of Jesus, the power of the Holy Spirit can cleanse you. Jesus, when he said, I am the truth, he meant he will be there to take this out of you. There is help. God wants to help you, but God also wants to use people to help you. How many times have I lied and I've had to go to a person and say, I'm sorry, I didn't tell you that exactly right. I lied. Now let me tell you the truth. Now would you please pray that God will forgive me. Where you have humility. Now the fourth H I give to you is this quickly. And most preachers won't give this H. 
But everywhere I go in Toronto, this H, I hear hell. Everywhere I go, I'm hearing people say, go to hell. I've always wanted to ask a person, could you tell me where that is? Here's the craziest thing. Did Ananias and Sapphira go to hell or did they go to heaven? Well, somebody says to me, well, I don't know. Well, let me ask you something. The Bible says that Ananias, Peter says to Ananias, Satan has filled your heart with lies. God the Father says in the Old Testament to King David, I do not look on your outward appearance, but I look on your heart. When you die, God is not going to look on the physical heart that pumps blood, but the spiritual heart. And he's going to judge you according to your heart. Now here's the craziest thing about this. Are you ready? God looks at the heart. And Peter says to Ananias, Satan has filled your heart with lies. Can a heart that is filled with Satan's lies get into heaven? Ananias, Sapphira comes along. Did you know that your husband did? Here's your chance to ask God to forgive you. She doesn't. She takes the path of her husband following the lies, can she get into heaven? Here's the craziest thing. Some of us, we've lied to ourselves telling us we're spiritually right. We've lied to ourselves that we're gonna get into heaven. We're lied to ourselves that our hearts are not filled with satanic lies. We've lied to ourselves so much, and when you are in hell for eternity, that's when you're gonna find out the truth. Here's the craziest thing. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and life. What does the Bible say? The truth now will set us free. The truth, the truth. So, so somebody says to me, what's the fifth age? Heaven. Heaven is not made up of people who are perfect. Heaven is made up of people like you and I, where we do lie. But there is a Jesus. There's a Jesus who wants not only forgive us, but there's a Jesus who wants to help correct us. There's a Jesus who wants to help convict us. There's a Jesus who wants to help us when we do lie and we do fall short of the glory of God. Here's the application, are you ready? First, let's start with ourselves. We need humility, we need honesty, and we need the Holy Spirit. Why do I use those three H's? Well, without the Holy Spirit, you'll never have godly humility. Without the Holy Spirit, you'll never have godly honesty. Six months ago when I wrote this sermon, and I was going through this in my head, I prayed this prayer, Jesus, if you're truth, then be the truth in my life. You won't believe how many times I felt the Holy Spirit say to me, that's not correct, that's not the truth, fix it. And I've had to go back to somebody and say to them, please forgive me, I didn't tell it to you right. I I, I lied, I didn't mean to, but I, I did lie. Here's the truth, could you pray for me? You won't believe how many times the Holy Spirit has come to me and given me honesty where he's showing me certain things in my life. Certain things in my life. I thought I was living in the truth and I wasn't. Certain things I was watching were hurting the heart of God but I had made sure that I didn't understand that. The second application is Jesus. Jesus died and he rose again so we could have the Holy Spirit, so we could have truth. And the truth is Jesus. Jesus doesn't give us truth and then leave. Jesus is truth. He said, I am truth. 
And the truth will set you free. The third one is friends. I love James 5, 16, where it says, therefore confess your sins. <laughs> you know, the first time I ever did this, oh man, was it hard. I had lied to a friend. It wasn't a big lie, it was so little, I could have got away with it. And I went to my friend and I said, I need to talk to you. And I said, you know that thing I said? Yeah, that's not the truth. I said, well, it's kind of like the truth, but it's, and I started trying to justify it. And the Holy Spirit said, would you tell the truth? Finally, in humility, with honesty, because of the Holy Spirit, I said to my friend, I lied. Now, anybody who convicts you or throws condemnation at you, you walk away from. Okay? Because the fact is this, and I know a lot of you are going to be very upset with me, we're all liars. We're all liars. Oh, come on. I guarantee you there's going to be some saint that comes up to me afterwards and says, 30 years, I've never told a lie, and then I'll say to them these words, until now. <laughs> How many times does something come out of your mouth and you, you, you know in your head, that's not absolutely true? Can I share this with you? You go to your friends, and God will honor you. God will honor you. And if your friend condemns you, you walk away. Jesus never came to condemn. Jesus came to save and forgive. Jesus came to love. When I was in Bible college in Springfield, Missouri, a guy used to come every year and preach, and I would sit in the front row. Only time of year I sat in the front row. He was so good. He was unbelievable. Man, how he could preach and just felt Jesus when he preached. Every time he came, it got a little weaker and weaker. It wasn't as strong as the first time. And second time it was weaker. Third time... And the fourth time he came, it was like, this is mush. A few years later, I heard that he got caught in a hotel room with his secretary. Back then, they called them secretaries. Today, they called them administrative assistant. Got caught in a hotel room with a secretary. Nobody knew it. He was living a lie. His church was one of the largest churches in the United States. It became one of the empty churches in the United States. People turned their backs on God. You know that stupid line? Liar, liar, pants on fire. I think there's a little spiritual meaning to that. See, one day, if you don't get it right with Christ, your pants will be on fire. But can I share this with you? There's no such thing as a lie in hell. Because they'll know the truth but they will not be set free. So what am I trying to say here? When you lie at work, when you lie to your neighbor, when you lie to a family member, or you lie to yourself, you're hurting God. You're hurting God. You're breaking his heart. So what do I do, Billy? Ask the truth to set you free. 
Ask the truth to humble you. Ask the truth to be on. You know, you know how many times I've had to tell a couple, I cannot perform your wedding? Because when they come into my office, I can tell they're not telling the truth. Jesus is the truth. 